Hello, I'm Atuba George. Now, this is getting interesting. I'm so glad. See, the wisdom of God is, is, is just available. We carry the Bible, but do you see what is written inside? Like I've always said, we don't read the Bible. We hear the word of God. <laughs> God. So when we look at it, our ears are open to hear. Now, that's the way you see. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, we bless you today. Open our eyes and our hearts to learn of you today, that we may find rest for our souls. Thank you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, amen. So we are still talking about forgiveness in our series Life lessons from the Bible. So we, we are looking at Joseph in, in, in relation to what Jesus said about forgiveness. Jesus said, always forgive. That's what he meant when he told Peter 70 times, seven times. Always forgive. He, doesn't, he didn't mean that to say, go take a, a notebook. And you're right. How many times have this guy offended me? Okay, this is the 34th time. Okay, I'm waiting. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. When he gets to, you know, Ha! Wait, oh, what am I saying? Oh, now it has even gotten to 300. I'm waiting. Oh, I would do. No, 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 no. Listen. So we're looking at Joseph's life. And I told you something yesterday. I said, learn this. Forgive expressly. When you forgive, what does it mean to forgive? Never hold to heart what people have done against you. Now, let me tell you how you, you can do that. Number one, like I said, acknowledge God in everything. Acknowledge God in everything. When you acknowledge the Lord in everything, now you'll see him big. Now, let me tell you this. How far you can see God is exactly how you estimate him in your heart. That's why I gave you that information. No man will be able, able to raise a finger against you except God permits that person. Now, you know already that his thoughts concerning you are good and not evil. So maybe at your place of work, even in your marriage, you know, sometimes a woman can say, can you imagine what my husband is doing to me? Can you imagine what my, 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 my wife is doing to me? Can you imagine what my boss is doing to me? Can you imagine what I, I put in all my, my effort into this place and look at, look, at, look at how they are taking it. Look at what they are saying. Relax. Relax. As long as it does not involve physical hurting. Now, I'm going to show you that. I'm going to show you that. Because you must learn. <clears throat> I told you something yesterday about David. Now, when I'm saying forgive me, I'm not just preaching you forgive, forgive, forgive. I'm now teaching you how to operate in that environment of forgiveness. Because you must learn that also. So, you are in a home. You're married to someone. And then um, you think you're being... Um, abused, you think you're not appreciated, you think you're, you know how these things work. So, so you're wondering, ah, you know something, my husband did something to me, I, I can never forgive him for it. And you're still married to him. No, 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 you're cheating yourself. You're cheating yourself. See, you are. And, and, and then, then there are people who are in marriages and they are being abused physically, I mean now. And then they are saying, eh, God hates divorce. I cannot, I cannot leave. That's why I'm still here. If, if not that, um, I fear God. You have to be careful when you make those decisions. Is that what the Lord is commanding you to do? You say, but but, but have, you, have you talked to the Lord about it? Have you talked to the Lord about that situation? Okay. Eh, but won't the Lord tell me to stay? If the Lord commands you to stay, he will tell you how to stay. Listen, listen. The Lord will never permit you to get into an environment where you will receive physical harm. 
Take this from him. I'm telling you, take this from him. See, people can cheat you. You know why people, you, and the Lord will allow it. You know why? He can replace what they cheat you. I mean, they, they steal your money, he can give you much more. People can even deal with you emotionally. He can tell you it's fine, relax. Why? Because it's simple, he can deal with that. But he is not going to permit you to be in an environment where physical damage is being done to your body. He will not. Say, how? Now, you see, most times, now what I'm telling you now is very touching, but you must learn. Most times, people don't listen to God in such situations. You know the reason? Because religion have blinded their minds that they never think God can talk about this. In their mind, I'm married, I'm married now, so I have to take it like that. Now I want you to listen. There are times God can tell you, step out of that relationship. Step out of that marriage. Not because he is killing the marriage. Now you begin to remember, but no now. I remember five years ago before we got married, I was praying for your husband and God showed me this man. So why would now God be telling me? Now I'm not saying you leave your marriage because your husband is beating you. I, I want you to follow what I'm saying. I'm saying the first thing you must do is acknowledge the Lord. Go before the Lord. But I'm opening your heart to all the possibilities. See? So what if can God tell me to leave the marriage? Yes. But when he tells you to leave the marriage, he's not telling you to go divorce your husband. That's not what he said. He said, leave the marriage. Leave the marriage. What, just obey what he says. Leave the marriage. Leave that environment. Go stay somewhere else by his word. Say, so what if the husband is... You see, that's the thing. I told you something yesterday. You must adopt this principle. Accept a corn of wheat falls to the ground and dies. So you are protecting this marriage so much that you don't want anything to happen to it. So you, and you are protecting it with your power and you are suffering in it. And you are not willing to hear any other thing, even from the Lord. But let me tell you the truth. Until you are able to get to that point where you are willing to release that marriage. Not the man, the marriage. See, because... You see, people get to the point where they don't love their husbands, but they love their marriage. They love to stay married. Do you love that man? No. So why are you here? Eh, I just don't want to be termed as a divorcee. I don't just want to, I, I, you know. So, so you see, now, God, God wants you to trust in him. Not in the status of being married. So God can command you, let that marriage die. Let it. Take your hands off it. Let it drop. When you get to that point where you release it, and you are able to release it, not, see, get this also. If God have revealed to you, that this is your husband. You know it. You know when God said, or oh, this is your wife. You know it. And now the same God is telling you, let it die. Then you remember what I taught you about faith. I'm letting this go by the command of the Lord. But I know that this is life for me. Because all God is doing at that point is that you relinquish your strength from keeping that marriage and you just relax and then God's going to work out things in a way that you never even imagined for you. Turn that whole marriage around and start a new journey that you are going to like. Praise God. But are you willing? Will you be willing to follow him through on that journey? 
Because all you can think about now, ah, if I say I'm leaving, he will just bring that other woman inside the house. And I've lost everything. <laughs> see? Now, those are imaginations you need to cast down. Why should you cast them down? Because you can hear the voice of God. Now, don't get to that point where you're so hurt you cannot hear God speak to you. I'm not telling you what a pastor will tell you. This is not a pastor's job. I'm telling you, this is not a pastor's job. Even as a pastor, if God tells me that kind of a thing to tell you, I'm going to tell him to tell you himself. See, because when it comes to real life issues now, you don't walk by your pastor's words. You walk by the convictions of your heart. The Bible said the just shall live by his own faith, not the pastor's faith, by his own faith. And what is faith? Faith is your ability to respond to what God tells you. And Jesus said, have faith in God, not in pastor. So, so when, oh, my pastor said, my pastor said, no, 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 no. It won't work all the time. <laughs> you must learn to get in with the Lord. You, you notice, you, that's what, they, that what happened to David. You think it was easy for David to leave the palace? But he had to take that decision and that spared his life. You need to take certain decisions sometimes that will spare your life. So get it, God will never permit you to be in an environment where you will be receiving physical harm constantly. If you hear any voice telling you to stay, I guarantee you that is not the Lord. Get me, I said physical harm. Praise God. So, now, let me show you something. Genesis chapter 31, this is Jacob now. Hmm. Verse 4, follow me now. So Joseph sent and called Rachel and Leah to the field, to his flock. And he said to them, I see your father's countenance that it is not favorable towards me as before. But the Lord of my father has been with me. And you know that with all my might I have saved your father. Yet your father have deceived me and changed my wages ten times. But look at something. But God did not allow him to hurt me. Did you see that? I've been working for your father. Now this is Joseph, um, J Jacob working for Laban. And, and he said Laban changed his wages. Now what do you mean change this? They will agree that, okay, you know what? This is what's going to be your wage. Just work with me for this year. Okay, sir. And then the harvest comes. The, 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 the sheep and stuff multiplies. And then, ah, no, 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 no. Let's do it this way. Um, you, you are going to take this and I'm going to take this. Mm -hmm. So that's not what you said before. Eh, is it, uh, am I not your boss? I'm, I'm telling you what you should do now. Just go and do it now. Okay, sir. 10 good times. Think about it. But jo Jacob said something. Now, why? You know what? You were cheated the first time. It's okay. Second time. Okay. Third time. Okay. Fourth time. Okay. Think about it. If you are working in a firm and they agree that they are going to be paying you $1,000 every month okay i like it and then you start working and then the next thing when it's time <laughs> they tell you sorry you this month we can't pay a thousand dollars we'll pay you seven uh, but he said are you going to no nah, no no we just changed you're going to get seven okay first month second month sorry you um yeah you know we agreed that we're going to pay you a thousand but we, you know last month we changed to seven but there's a problem this month we're going to change it to Five. Third month, by the third month, you, you will wake up and say, after all, Jesus rose on the third day. I'm rising up. <laughs> I'm leaving this place. Jacob was there ten times. His wages were changed. What kept him? God. He said, but there's something he said. And that's why I took it there. He said, but God never permitted him to hurt me. That's something you should allow sink in your heart. So you know the difference between persecution that is caused by, caused by God 
and the one that your foolishness is keeping you in there and you're receiving praise god but you're not foolish and that's why i'm sharing these things with you so your heart will get it and be strengthened in the name of the lord jesus i'll see you tomorrow bye bye